Hi everyone, so today I'm finally doing a Cinema 4D tutorial. I'll be talking about how to create basic shapes, how to keyframe, how to add a camera, how to add a light, all of that stuff. Keep in mind though, I am 16, I'm only a fan editor, so none of this is going to be super professional, but with my basic knowledge, I've been able to make some pretty nice looking edits and today I'm finally going to share that knowledge with all of you. So first of all, if you don't already have Cinema 4D, then I will have a link in the description to download it. So open up Cinema 4D, if you've just downloaded it, you might have to look through your documents to find the app, but if you follow the same video as me, then this might pop up when you open it, just close it out of it. And same thing with this window. And this is where you're going to do everything. I know it looks super overwhelming, there's a ton of tools and even with these little bars there's a ton more tools hidden inside of them. But trust me, I've only worked with like maybe 10 tools and I've gotten some nice looking things. Before we start creating anything, you want to make sure that your project settings are correct. So this right here is going to determine the length of your clip. So right now this is 90 frames, that's a minute and 30 seconds. So coming back to After Effects, let's say I want my Cinema 4D clip to last from this speed right here all the way to this speed. So we want our Cinema 4D clip to only go from here to here. And how we're going to do that is just looking at this number right here. So my number is 45 and now you just want to drag the blue thing to where you want your clip to start and my number is 15. So you want to take the number at the end of your clip and subtract it with the number at the beginning of your clip. Now coming back to Cinema 4D, you want to go here and just select that and delete it. Whatever number you get, you want to type in one less of that. So for me, it's 30, so I'm going to put 29. This is because when you save your clip, Cinema 4D is going to create an extra frame at the end and it's going to fit right into where you want your clip to go. One last thing that we need to set up before we get started, you want to go to Render, Edit Render Settings. And here where it says output, you need to change these numbers so that they fit the composition of your edits on After Effects. So how you're going to check that is go to composition, composition settings, and here you'll see mine is 2048, 2048, it's square for Instagram. So I'm just going to put those numbers in here. So now anything that's on these darker sides won't be seen in your edit. So let's get started on a basic cube transition. You want to go up here where the cube is of course and you can just click that or you can also hold it down and you can see all of the other shape options that you can create. You can do the same thing for each of these tabs but I won't be explaining all of these right now. Anyways, as you can see we finally have a cube. If you want to switch your perspective a bit, you want to go to these little arrows at the top right. You use them by holding them down and then you can just drag in whatever direction you want to go in. So right now I'm moving my mouse from left to right and as you can see it's also moving from left to right. This is going to allow you to zoom in or zoom out. This of course allows you to rotate. And this will let you see other windows so you can see it from different perspectives but we won't be going too much into that right now. Now to add a picture to our cube, you want to hold down create here, then click new default material, and you want to just double click that. Make sure that you're in the color panel, and then here where it says texture, you want to double click this little bar here. That should open up your files, and from there you can choose whatever picture you want to use. If you want, you can keep the reflectance on, you just click here, and then you can kind of adjust like how, how much reflectivity you want, but I usually just like to turn it off when it's just a picture. Now you can just close out of this window and you want to drag this onto your shape. So my picture looks a little weird, he's a bit stretched out, so how we're going to fix that is just click the little picture here. And these are the four settings that you're going to want to play around with when your picture looks weird like this. So offset U is going to move it from side to side, offset V is going to move it up and down, length U is going to change the size horizontally like this, and of course length V is going to change it vertically like this. Unfortunately, there's really no way of telling whether you fix your picture 100%. I usually just compare it to the original and hope that they look similar. Now that we've got that, let's go back to our cube and edit it a bit. If you want to make the edges more rounded, then click off fillet. First, you want to increase fillet subdivision. Then you can increase the fillet radius. The fillet radius is what makes it curvier. But if you don't increase the fillet subdivision, then it's just going to end up looking very sharp like this. Now to change the size of our cubes, rather than trying to change these values clicking one by one, you can just click T on your keyboard, and if you move your mouse anywhere, it doesn't even have to be on the cube, and hold it down and hold towards the cube, you can see it's getting smaller. If you hold your mouse and move it away from the cube, you can see it's getting larger. 
The yellow controls will only change it in one direction, so be sure not to drag that unless you actually want a rectangle. To rotate your cube, you want to press R on your keyboard. And this is pretty self-explanatory. The green is going to let you turn it in this direction. The red will let you turn it up and down. And the blue will let you turn it like this. You can also just click none of them and just click kind of in the center of it. And that will let you control all three directions at once. One last thing that we have to do before we start our transition is just click on this camera and that'll of course add a camera. So this is a method that I found pretty useful in placing my camera. So you want to click on this little square thing here and just click this top right one and click on options and configure. Then go to view and change this to perspective. Now go back to our original window and click default camera and then click camera. Since we don't really need these two windows, you can just go to Panel, Arrangement, and then click either Two View Stack or Two View Side by Side, it's your choice. But now we can control the camera and its position in this bottom window, and then over here we can see where the camera actually is and what it's actually seeing. So to fix this wheel rotation, first I'm just going to go to Coordinates here, and I'm just going to zero out all of these rotations. And now you can see the cube is completely out of view, so here I'm just going to drag the camera down and move it to the middle. A quick way of making sure your camera is in the middle is just going to the X value here and change that to 0 and change the Y value to 0 as well. Then you can use this blue arrow to make it closer or farther apart from your cube. Now that I've got my camera in place, I'm just going to click this again to get rid of it, but you can always come back to it by clicking this again. Now let's finally do the transition. So you just want to put your mouse down here and just drag it over a little bit so you can see all the rotation values. If you want, you can change these to XYZ if that's what you're more familiar with. If you're familiar with 3D editing on After Effects and you know that rotation X is going to turn it up and down, rotation Y is going to turn it from side to side, and rotation Z is going to turn it in a kind of clockwise rotation, I guess. So to create a basic cube turn, you just want to click the little circle next to whatever rotation you want to do. I'm going to do all three of them, but of course you can just choose one direction. Then you want to click this little red symbol here. What that does is automatically create keyframes for you. So let's say you go like in the middle of your clip and you change this to 15. It's automatically going to create a keyframe for you. You can have the rotation start out at zero like this, or you can use the rotation tool and just turn it to a completely random direction. Now you just want to click towards the end of your timeline and that'll automatically drag the little blue indicator to there. When you're adding keyframes to the end of your clip, you want to add them a frame before your clip ends. So mine ends at 29, so I'm going to be adding my keyframes at frame 28. Now you want to change the value of your rotation. You want to add about 180 to whatever number you have there. So for me, negative 20 plus 180, that is 160. Now your cube should be in the completely opposite direction as it was in the beginning. Of course, as with any other transition, we want to add graphs to this. So to do that, you want to go to Window, Timeline F Curve, and that's where you'll see your graph. You can click the plus sign here so you can see each thing that you've keyframed, and you can change the graphs individually like that. Or you can just click back to the cube here, and you want to just hold down your mouse anywhere near the keyframes here, and just drag it and kind of highlight it. Now you can drag all of the three graphs at once, and you can do the same thing for the keyframes at the bottom. Now you can just click play to preview your transition. Keep in mind though that if you're doing something more complex with more objects and stuff like that, then your preview here might not be the actual pace of your clip. So for example here, if I preview one of my clips, you can see that it's super laggy and that is not at all how it actually turns out in the edit. So to get a more accurate preview of the timing of your clip, you want to press Command S on your keyboard or Control S for your windows. And you can just change the file name and choose whatever folder you want to put it in and save it. Then go back to After Effects and you want to drag the C4D file onto After Effects. You want to move your little blue indicator to where you want the clip to start. Then click the square bracket on your keyboard to easily move it into its place. Go to Preview and make sure you checked off Cache before playback. Now just let it play and it might take some time to render the whole scene, just wait for it. And now you can see a more accurate timing of your edit. Now coming back to cinema, you may have to keep changing your graphs until it's the right timing, but I'm pretty happy with how mines are. But we can't save our clip just yet because if you click this little symbol here, 
This shows you how it's going to look when you save your clip and obviously we do not want it to look like this at all. We need to add a background, we need to add a light because we can't even see the side of the cube so let's fix those right now. So first just click the little light bulb to add a light of course. We can go back to the little two window thing and that will allow us to move the light. Now to change the light settings, first you want to go to general. Here you can change the type of light, so omni is more of just like a regular light bulb. Spotlight, obviously, it's just a circle. Infinite basically adds light everywhere as you can see here. Every side is lit up and there's really no shadows. And the area kind of does the same thing, not exactly. As you can see now, there's some shadows to the side. I'm going to use the area light, but you can keep comparing these and see which light you really want. Then you want to go to shadow and Again, this is one of those things where you just gotta compare them, see which ones you really want. I usually use ray trace because that is more accurate. Then you can go to shadow and here you can change how visible the shadow is. So if you want to make it less visible, then just turn down the density. But we still can't really see the shadows because we don't have a wall or a floor or anything around our cube. So to create the floor, there is a floor option here, but I prefer just using a cube. To create the floor here, I'm just going to drag this little square down to flatten out the cube. Then you can just move this down and you can just extend it. Then you want to hold create here and create another material. Double click that and just check off reflectance. Then just go back to color and you can just change this to whatever color you want for your floor. I'm just going to keep it white. And as we did earlier, just drag the little circle to the cube. Now I'm just going to create another cube and this is going to be the wall behind. So I'm going to decrease the size in this direction and move it back, increase the size like this. And I'm just going to add the same material to that wall. Now we can just duplicate this by holding command or control on your keyboard and just hold onto the cube and you want to just drag it down so that the arrow is horizontal and there you go that's how you duplicate it. Now just clicking on this cube and I'm just going to rotate it by 90 and move it to the side, duplicate that and I'm going to change this x value so since it has a negative sign I'm going to delete that negative sign but if yours doesn't have a negative sign then just add one. Now if we go back to our original window and render this, it looks a lot better. One last thing that we can do to make our clip a lot more interesting is going back to the camera and I'm just going to go back to this view over here and I'm going to make my camera move from one side to the other as my cube is turning. So in the beginning, I'm just going to move it more to the left here. I'm also going to rotate it so that it's still facing our cube like this. Then at the end of my clip, I'm just going to change the rotation and same thing for the x value. I completely forgot to talk about how to change the picture of the cube in the middle of your transition so that it actually transitions between one picture and another. So a nice way of doing that is just going back to After Effects. Here I've imported pictures where my clip is going to go and I'm just going to do a basic slide transition between them. And you want to just trim your composition to where your clip is going to go. Now I'm just going to render this quickly. Then you want to just convert your file into an mp4 file and I just use Handbrake to do that. Now come back to cinema and click the little material that we had with the picture. And to replace this picture you want to click the three dots and just locate the little clip that you just made. Then go to editor and click animate preview. And when you preview it you should be able to see the transition. When you're finally done making your clip now you want to render your clip. So go to render and go to edit render settings. Make sure again that the width and the height are the same as your composition settings on After Effects. Make sure that the frame range says all frames. Then go to save. Where it says format, click mp4. And here you can just type whatever name you want it to have. You also want to go to options and you want to turn the reflection depth to 2. I didn't use any reflections in my clip so this isn't going to matter much for now. But later on when you create clips with a reflection that's going to save your render time a lot. Once you've changed all of that, you want to just hold down this middle option and click Render to Picture Viewer. It's already my default, so I can just click it once. Once it's rendered, you can just drag that into After Effects, just move the clip to where it's supposed to start, and pre-compose it. 
and there's your clip